Deus One HF coil. I'm going to try to demonstrate the overload feature on this machine. Some of these, some people have been asking me, you know, I've had several questions about the overload feature. So I'm going to try to explain or try to d describe it. And I'm going to make, try to m attempt, make an attempt at demonstrating it. I've tried this many times before in the past, but it's never worked and it probably won't work again, but I'm going to try to describe the overload tone because you guys are not going to be able to get the full reality of the overload tone on the Deus One. It's very unique. It's dynamic. It's very descriptive. And, um, other machines don't have what the Deus One has, and that's full tones. Even the Deus Two, the Deus Two full tones. We'll talk about that on a different day. <laughs> right. I'm not going to go into details about the Deus Two full tones. The Deus One full tones. You know, one machine that um, is similar to it is um, like some Fisher machines or some Technetic machines. But those machines have overload circuits on them, right? The G machines, the T machines, the F series machines, you know, the Technetics and, uh, and uh, um, Fisher, the um, the old racers, Racer 2, the Impact, the um, Amphibio, the Cruiser, those have overload circuits too. And so when you overload that machine, when you get over a large piece of iron, it's going to go pew, pew, pew. Or the old whites machines, those have overload circuits too. Um, you know, blanks out the whole screen. You don't get any depth meter. And all you get is a, you know, the same thing on the other machines I was talking about too. Um, the, the older machines, they just have those overload circuits that just disable the machine, right? When you're in iron or when you have coins right on the surface, like a large coin on the surface. Or sometimes relics are right on the surface too. There might be a silver coin right on the surface. So I don't want my machine overloading and disabling my tones, right? Um, I want to get the whole dynamic of the tones. The Equinox does not have an overload circuit on it. Um, so it takes a little bit to learn that overload tone on something big. And it struggles on those larger items um, on pinpointing them. And... Um, a lot of people don't want to dig up big stuff, but a lot of people do, right? If you're in an area that has guns or cannonballs or larger iron items, then those can be very valuable when you want to get those out of the ground or swords or whatnot and, um, or horseshoes and the simplex the same way it does not have an overload circuit on it. So you don't get a siren or a loud noise um they overload in different ways each machine overloads in different ways um the legend does not have an overload circuit on it either so it doesn't give you an overload circuit tone um alert warning so and the legend is kind of difficult to learn that overload tone you know i'm still trying to figure that one out um that overload um the big iron overload you know, with the older versions on the on the legend it was really hard to understand but now that we have um now that they've been updating that um software on the legend they've made it a lot easier to pinpoint um larger items iron items with iron filter and whatnot and different frequency um different frequency options so the Deus One is the same way but the the Deus One is a single frequency machine and um, it, it still has an iron bias, it's similar to an iron bias or an iron filter, is the silencer. And that has a lot to do with um, pinpointing those, those iron objects that are maybe round or um, larger items when you're um, hunting in a really spot that has a lot of small iron in it. Um, you can hit on masked non-ferrous targets in the iron um, if you drop your silencer down quite a bit but the overload tone is very unique and it it seems to blend the tones together um, and you can actually control that overload tone too there's called an audio overload setting um, under the audio response menu um, you can control that 
overload. So if you're around large iron, it's not going to go silent on you. Um, it tends to it tends to clip your tones when you're around large iron. The Deus One, the Deus Two does not have that feature. Does not have an audio overload feature. The um, Deus One has this feature on it. Um, so like when you're in tot lots, you can drop that that down. I'm talking about full tones here. I'm not talking about two, three, four, five, or pitch tones, right? talking about full tones and the full tones is it's very rich broad range of 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 tones that you have for it you know, really broad range of minerals really broad range of iron really broad range of lower conductors really broad range of mid conductors and a small range of higher conductors right that's the whole thing with the ds1 you know it's just the, that range of high conductors is very small and uh, the tones in full tones um, but I'm going to sweep a large piece of foil over the coil and compare it to a gold ring same numbers different tones I won't change anything on the machine right and I'll try to demonstrate the overload tone I've tried to demonstrate it many times before but just the camera the, the camera just does not do the Deus one justice I'm telling you in real life man there's just no way to that this that a camera can capture the full reality of full tones on the Deus one it's so amazing even all my videos all my videos it is not real man it when, when you when you use a Deus one in real life it's way different from my videos way different from my videos man I'm just telling you it's way different right okay now I'll swing large piece of foil this is just hot stock hot program up let's do it 42, 42, listen to it. All right, overload. This is a gold ring, right here, a small gold ring. It's now smooth it is. 42, same exact number, but totally different tones, right? Overload tone right here. It's a forced tone. It's really intense, right? Now I'll put this smaller piece of foil in front of it. 31. Right? And this is a small gold ring. This is a very thin gold ring, right? So usually this size of foil right here, I pass up unless I'm going for necklaces, right? Here's a small pendant here. Forty-three, right? Forty-three. Forty-two. Listen to that. It's an overload, right? Major overload tone. Now I'll put this spinner ring. I have a spinner ring here. It's not gold. It's stainless. Forty-three. Forty-two. Major overload, right? A big piece of foil. Now I'll swing this large compact over it. Overload, it's screaming. Right. Do another overload here, right? 42. So as I'm swinging over this target here, so that gold ring and this foil, exactly the same numbers, but totally different tones, right? And you can tell the size of the target, right? That's the whole thing. You can tell the size of the target. That's very important when you're hunting. Anywhere you go, it's the size of the target. And if you're going for coins, you just go for the smaller targets. Um, I'm not. I'm not saying that this is a deep machine. This is not a deep machine. It's very good at jewelry, and it's very good at relic hunting. I would say that if you're in a bed of nails, the nine inch coil does a lot better than this coil right here, just for some reason. Um, it's just, it's, and even on tests and whatnot too, um, I've, I've tested the, the depth of this, this coil here, um, depth test, like in my, my shallower test garden in the back there, it's not a very deep, um, 
coil and especially in hot program um in full tone full tones tends to um the the soil seems to mask targets when i'm in full tones um but it still hits on targets right if i'm swinging fast it's such a fast recovery speed and very little managing of tones right you don't have any tone breaks you don't have to really manage too much stuff um it's very good for jewelry um but the overload tone is super descriptive i've never used a machine that has this type of audio um that's very descriptive um a three-tone machine it's not gonna do this it's not going to do this man it does it doesn't give you that descriptive audio and um you know it does it it does a hot program does tend to skip a lot of targets up if they're on their edge so if a ring is on their edge or um, a coin is on its edge it's gonna be a lot harder to hit it when you're in full tones in five tone or pitch tone it's gonna hit it a lot better but in pitch tones you just don't get that dynamic audio um in pitch tones you don't want to use pitch tones in the trash it's it makes it really hard to concentrate when you have a lot of trash that you're having to d discriminate out and with the hot program you don't have to manage your discrimination right you're you have a full audio so you're getting that mineral range the uh, a really big mineral range really large iron range a really large um lower conductor conductive range and each one of those tenths of a number is a tone that's how many tones are on there so it seems to just blend and melt those tones together um a lot of people say that it sounds junky and it sounds like farts you know a lot of a lot of targets sound junky but it's a descriptive audio so i can skip a lot of junky really junky targets up that i would be digging out with other machines because if they're two three four five tone or 40 tone or 50 tone machines they just don't have that range of audio, um, that descriptive audio. Um, I can tell the shape, right? I can tell the shape of targets with this core right here. I can tell when they're on their edge, right? I can tell what the target is before I dig it out. Not very many machines I can do that um, with, you know, um, without looking at the numbers. You know, the, the dais dais machines i always have under my chin i don't look at the numbers right and the numbers are really irrelevant to my soil anyway the deeper the coins are that if they're on their edge or if they're in, in iron or if they're around foil or if they're co-located with some other junk in the soil you're never going to have a good clean tone on targets right and you just pretty much got to explore you know got to explore and just dig up a lot of trash learn what not to dig up and um the the dais one the dais one is is easy to change frequencies right all you have to do is to change frequencies is just a push of the button when you um on the dais two to change frequencies you have to do a lot of stuff you have to change programs and then what if your other program is not set up for the soil conditions or the um you know the emi or whatnot dais one is really um it's really a turn on and go machine a lot more than the DS2. The DS2 is a really powerful machine. So I, I'm always finding myself struggling trying to tame that power down on the DS2 to shut it up and to stabilize that machine um, and learn which program is gonna work best in the soil conditions for that day. With the DS1, turn it on and go. All right, smack targets out, no messing around. Well, thank you for watching.